Hey guys, I uh, just want to try and make a quick little video here in the morning before my son wakes up and I gotta go to work, so um, hopefully the camera doesn't move too much. Um, okay, so I took a sample from the FM radio and uh, I can show you how that works here to choose the FM radio. Um, you can go to the drum synthesizer, for example, and go to the mic button. And from the mic button, you can use the blue knob to choose uh, different inputs. Let me turn this down. Okay, so there the radio is selected, and you can change stations here. I don't have an antenna plugged in right now, so it's got the okay reception in my house, but not not so good. I'll try to go to 94.7 here. Yeah, no such luck. If you plug uh, a headphone cable in here, you can use it as an antenna. Let me turn this back to a microphone. You can select a microphone as the internal input, and if you have that selected, uh, the internal microphone works. If you plug a cable into the record input, it takes over the signal, and uh, uh, you can record from there. Another interesting note, and something I used for this example I'm going to show you, is this icon where you can record from the output of the synth. So when you want to sample, there's a trigger level here. You can set your threshold of when to sample automatically, uh, or you can just hit a key and sample. Now I have something in the sample bank for this particular uh, drum kit, so I am not going to take a sample right now, but it's just as literally as easy as hitting record, and it takes a sample and automatically lays it across the keys in, in drum sample mode. So here is drum sample mode. I did take uh, a sample of the FM radio, like I said, and it was a, uh, a Vietnamese language radio station. Here, I'll play the sample for you now. Let's see. So you can see I've got some delay on there here in uh, the effects mode. No LFO, no envelope. So here's the... Oh, there's my coffee maker beeping. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so the samples, it, it takes uh, this long sample and puts it across the keys and gives you separate in and out points for every sample. So here's... I've adjusted the in and out points to be just syllables, basically. Okay, so I did this also previously with uh, a jazz guitar from um, a jazz guitar station, a local jazz station. So let me go to the tape and I can show you um, the jazz guitar came out sounding like this. And I took the sample of the jazz guitar, assigned it to a bunch of keys, completely restructured the rhythm and melody, and then resampled uh, sampled all four tracks I had four tracks of jazz guitar to the tape, pan them differently, um, but that doesn't matter because when I resampled it, it resamples to mono. But I resampled everything uh, with effects to make it all louder, and then I have a loop that is here on track one, which I can solo and show you. Okay, and then I added the uh, vocals from the sample I just showed you. There's also a bass line on track three that you won't hear on this phone. We'll go back here. That's one of the neat things when you're when you're working with tape, you can use loops. I, I have a 16-beat loop here of this particular. 
particular song. And you can use the shift plus the arrow keys to go back and forth through the different loops you have on tape. So you can essentially make arrangements that you can play live if you were to want to. So I'll go back one more. Something that I had in there earlier. And go all the way back. Bass stuff you can hear. Cluster. And these are drum beats from within the unit that I programmed uh, into a pattern sequencer and then laid to tape. Let's go forward. This is the string synth, the sound. A little bit of reverb. Radio. Like this. Okay, let's go forward and see what's next on the tape. I can't remember. Uh, some other beats. Synth Engine is the second track. It's the digital synth engine. But one of the, the things about this that's important to, sh to mention is um, I connected the OP1 to my computer used the COM uh, connectability through USB, browsed to the drum folders, and input my own drum samples as opposed to sampling them. In Logic, uh, I had a bunch of 808 drum samples, so I used Bias Peak to assemble those into a, into a mono AIF track with all the samples in one, one track, one after the other. That's, you know, that type of thing and um, loaded those into the drum banks. So if you go to the drum synth and you select a drum pattern, you can see here's my user kit, essentially. So uh, if we go to that, we'll go back to drums, I believe it's here on drum sound one. Yeah. All your basic 808 sounds, and uh, I put those on tape. Uh, I made a sequence. You can see with the pattern sequencer, this is my 808 sequence, and uh, what it sounds like. So again, you got uh, the ability to select instrument track. Swing time. Turn that off. Back to tape. Yeah, there's those drums soloed on track one. I know this has been a kind of chaotic video, handheld camera, early morning pre-coffee commentary, and uh, a little bit scattered, but um, you know, a, a week and a half into ownership of the OP1, I can tell you that not only is this worth the $800 for the hardware and the engineering that you get, um, it's literally an injection of creativity to your music studio, so uh, something to think about. I mean, for those of you that look at the price and get skeptical about this, Think about how long you've stared at that computer screen and how important it would be to, to, to be 
given an opportunity to, to get back outside of it in a new and unique way. Um, you know, that does have, uh, the, the, there are some limitations with this. It's a four-track device. I mean, it, you know, there are, there are times where I'd like it to be able to run multiple sequences and record multiple tracks of audio beyond the four. However, um, music was made on four tracks for a long time, and the Teenage Engineering crew knew that, and, and innovation uh, can be forced through the limitation. And, you know, I've, I've worked with software sequencers and software DAWs for a long time now, and uh, it is safe to say that in my experience, the OP1 does force you to think creatively. Those tools you learn in your DAW come into play with this device, uh, but it is a very unique tool, and I look forward to spending more time with it. Um, just a quick quick uh, note, I do plan to do updates of all of the synth engines at some point here with video. Um, I've got Cluster, the FM, Dr. Wave, Phase, Pulse, Digital, String, and the Sampling Engine, which is where I got my Vietnam sample. Oh, this is a uh, Beatles, actually. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. Next time I'll hold the camera still and have coffee before. Take it easy, guys.